Staff at the ANC are approaching the fourth month without salaries. Their medical aid has also been suspended due to the party's financial woes. ANC Staff Representative Committee Chairperson Mvusi Mdala shares more on the picket that they were holding today. Very good evening to you and thank you so much for speaking to us. So tell us about the protest. Um, do you think it'll have any success given the fact that you yourselves uh, suspended strike action in September for staff to focus on winning the local government elections. Uh, just share with us about your prospects of success here, getting through to the leadership. Uh, thank you, uh, SAPC and Fubu. The picket is tomorrow, is not today. Uh, we believe that uh, the picket is going to be successful. It will be for the first time that the ANC staff will be picketing at the ANC, NEC sitting. And then given that, we are encouraged, as we'll be picketing tomorrow, uh, by the support we have received from the ANC Women's League statement that they've issued yesterday, condemning this unlawful conduct of the ANC in treating its staff. Mm -hmm. We believe this picket will be successful because we want to remind the ANC National Executive Committee that the, the National Executive Committee and the ANC is not exempted from the rule of law. Therefore, they must immediately stop what they are doing because rule of law is for everyone, even the governing party is have, subjected to that. Have you approached the Labour quarters and are you taking any concurrent legal action? And I ask this because in mentioning that suspension of your picket in September, one of the reasons you did that was because you said you wanted to ensure overwhelming majority win for the party. Does that mean you still have faith in the movement but not its management? Yes, we still have faith in the movement. We'll continue to have faith in the movement. The challenge that you are having is the current management and the leadership of the ANC. Fortunately, on Friday, I think a watershed moment took place in the history of the country by the leadership of the ANC signing a recognition, a recognition agreement with the, the Nehau, and therefore, I think in moving forward, Nihau will be taking uh, the struggle forward of the workers of the ANC. And also Nihau have clearly indicated that if uh, they will be filing in the High Court on this issue of salaries, but also our struggle is not about salaries only. All right, let's talk about that. Because in August, it was reported that the ANC has been battling with cash flow for months and had an unsettled bill of 80 million rand for SARS tax. However, there were also revelations recently that the president of the party donated some 360,000 rand towards the election campaign. So just in your view, do you think that there could be concerted efforts within the leadership to fundraise for salaries? In our view, as we indicated before, when we submitted a memorandum for the first time on the 15th of June, that the, the, some of the challenges that are confronting the ANC to be in, unable to pay its staff with the financial mismanagement. And then also we believe that uh, there is no political will from the leadership to raise money to ensure that its staff is paid. And then I think we believe that if they can have that political will and then but because they don't care for the staff well-being of the ANC, they are not going an extra mile if they can do money can be found as it has been found for elections. Mm. You say financial management by which office and um, has anything happened with regards to that? Have you filed formal complaints? There would obviously be individuals who would be at the helm of that financial management. As in, have you asked for them to be brought to book? And is it possible for you to reveal whom you believe the blame lies with? No, I, by this financial mismanagement, you are not blaming a particular individual. We are saying that if you look at the decision that they management have taken since uh, 2018 when they stopped to pay our provident fund in November 
they've came to other contractual agreements with other employment. Uh, and therefore, if there was no money, they should not have done that in that financial management we are talking about that. We have not discussed into detail, and therefore we're not going to do, talk about that yet because we are continuously requesting meetings to talk about that because at this stage, we cannot talk in full because you don't know how the finances are being managed. And then we believe that how is going to be able to mm. talk to but that. But can you say you don't know how the finances are being, are being managed and then in the same token say there's financial mismanagement and that you're not really sure who is behind those decisions like the one that you've just mentioned over Provident Fund, but at the same time that uh, you, ha you have no faith in the leadership because of the position that you find yourselves in? Now, when you're saying that uh, this financial mismanagement, you know, for you to be in a position to talk about a detail of that, there must be a disclosure. At this stage, there's not been a disclosure okay. between the management and the staff committee so that you say that uh, there is the income. How is this money being managed? Is it properly managed? Okay, so tell us a little bit more about how staff are weathering the storm. One of the things you're asking for is for the provident and pension funds that have not been paid for the last two years to be paid out or the contributions to be paid immediately. Do you have any faith that that will happen? But in the meanwhile, how are staff surviving? It's very hard for staff to survive in the meantime because they cannot provide uh, for their families. And then the staff of the ANC, they cannot service their bonds, they cannot pay for their cars, they cannot pay for their houses. Some of them, their cars and houses are being repossessed. And then that is putting them in a very difficult position because when your car and your house is being repossessed, that means that affects your, your, your credit rating at the bank. And then it's something that is going to take very long to recover from. And that also it affects one of the key values of our constitution, dignity. That the, this uh, process that the NC staff is subjected to by the employer, it also touch on their dignity. That is the one of the key values in our constitution that must be prospected and respected at all time. And therefore, staff of the ANC, currently some of their kids cannot go to school and therefore they are being given notices that they must not return to school because they are bad payers. The staff of the ANC, it's very difficult to explain in detail how they are suffering. They're not getting joy to do that, but they are subjected to many hardships because of this non-payment of salaries. Also, you must take note that for the past, since 2018, staff of the ANC have been becoming poor because there has been no salary increment. Okay, thank you so much for speaking to us. And Vusi Madala, who is uh, a ANC staff representative committee chairperson.